many parties come, they drop by, visit, make statements. But it is important for everybody to understand in 2014 what India was and in what precarious situation the Indian economy was. And today, in 2023, nine years later, how India is the fifth largest economy in the world, the fastest gr growing innovation and startup ecosystem in the world, the fastest growing economy in the world. And that has happened because over the last nine years, over two elections, Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji and the BJP have worked hard to transform the entire landscape for the young Indian and indeed in these elections for the young Nagas. I always use one example to demonstrate how far we have traveled as a country and place that as a goal for Nagaland as well. In 2014, and I don't know how many of you are aware here, over 80-85% of mobile phones used in India were imported. And in 2022-2023, 100% of the mobile phones that are consumed in India, including Apple, Samsung, all of these big brands are manufactured in India. <coughs> I say this because this highlights the potential and promise that we have and what Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji as a BJP is building for the future young Indian and young Nara. What does the next five years mean if the last five years is continued? What does it mean? Many political parties will come, they will make promises, they will make tall claims, they will abuse, they will try and distract voters. But in essence, the next five years is a year are years that will represent huge opportunity for the young youth of Nagaland as it will represent for the rest of India as well. For example, the Prime Minister in the budget has announced 8,000 crores for skilling. And one of the most important things in the manifesto or that the BJP has promised for the youth is that over 80 to 90,000 youth of Nagaland will be skilled every year in industry-ready, future-ready skills that will provide them not just employment opportunities, but provide them self-employment opportunities. Number two, that a digital India startup hub, which is today only in Kohima, will be in every district of Nagaland. Therefore, young Nagas who are technologically savvy and are today, as you know, over the last three years, in Dimapur, Kohima, and Chuchuimlang, we have started three digital nilets, we do digital skilling. Similarly, in the coming five years, in every district, we will start a Digital India Startup Hub, which will be an innovation and incubator and a startup for young Nagas who want to create startups. As you know, India has today 90,000 startups, 109 unicorns, and it is certainly Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji's dream that the next five years there are unicorns from Nagaland and there are many, many hundreds of startups from Nagaland. Nursing and healthcare is one of the biggest areas today where the world requires talent and it is in the budget announced that there will be many nursing colleges opened and it is clear that at least one or two nursing colleges will be opened in Nagaland for young Naga girls and young Naga men who intend to make healthcare their profession. There are many such things, but the bottom line that I want to share with you and through you, through all the young voters and the voters of Nagaland is that Nagaland is on the threshold of leaving behind decades of despair, decades of strife, and moving into an era of opportunities, development for even the remotest district and the remotest Naga in the remotest district. This determination is not an empty claim because this is what India has seen and experienced in the last nine years. And the last five years, the alliance, the double engine alliance between the NDPP and the BJP have made tremendous progress and, and taken Nagaland forward. But in the next five years, we expect to take that even to the next level 
and really create opportunities for all Naga youth and indeed all Nagas. And all of this will be done in a, say, in a saying that in Hindi, the Honorable Prime Minister has made our political ideology, which is Sabka Saat, Sabka Vikas, Sabka Vishwas, Sabka Prayas, which is in English, all together, progress for all, development for all, prosperity for all, but working together to create this era of prosperity, peace and development. I will give you one example. Uh, it requires for states to be uh, to, to reach a certain critical mass in, in terms of the digital economy takes time. It requires the skilling capabilities to be built, it requires youth to be motivated, it requires investments to come. And the example that I use about the future of Nagaland is the following simple example. Six years ago, if somebody had asked me, or seven years ago, if somebody had asked me, will you, Uttar Pradesh become one of the hottest destinations for technology in India? You would have said no, I would have said no, everybody would have said no. Because there were law and order issues, investments were not going there, it was not the preferred destination. But today, Uttar Pradesh is one of the hottest set segments for technology investments and startups. It is exactly like that. We have laid the ground in Nagaland. D <coughs> digital skilling centers have been created. Next five years, as, as, as I've told you, there is a clear goal that we will skill 80,000 to a lakh of young Nagas every year in advanced skills. And the moment that type of talent is available, that type of commitment with Digital India startup hubs in every district, investments will come and therefore Every young Naga, instead of having to go to Bangalore or going to Hyderabad and working in a startup, it is my dream and our Prime Minister's dream that the next wave of unicorns should come from the Northeast and in particular since we are in Nagaland, from Nagaland. It is clear that law and order, peace, has a direct correlation to investments and investments have a direct correlation to jobs and self-employment and that in turn has a direct correlation to the economic growth. Uh, many, many states in India today that had in the past become, have, had been states that were deficit states, that were not generating economic activity of their own, have now become, due to leadership, due to political partnership between central government and the state government, have become active, fast-growing economy. Like I said, Uttar Pradesh is a classic example. So I see absolutely, I'm absolutely, I have conviction and I'm convinced that another five years of this double engine government working together will see Nagaland move from being an economy that was always depending <coughs> on Delhi to an economy that will be a surplus positive economic activity driven economy. One of the ironies about elections is that parties like Congress that had been running the governments for decades in this country, that they are also, this is the power of our democracy, and we have to deal with that, that irony, which is that these same parties will come and criticize the hard work and effort that has protected India during this most horrific COVID pandemic. India as a country today is a shining example of how lives and livelihoods were protected during the one crisis that fell and that was in front of every country and every people around the world. And how has India come out, out after the pandemic? We have delivered 220 crore vaccines made in India. We are the fastest growing economy in the world. We are the highest uh, FDI in the world and we are the fastest growing innovation and digital economy in the world. I will not say too much about the Congress, excepting to say that in 2014, they left this country in ruins. And the best way to respond to the Congress's election time rhetoric, and what I call notanki, is to quote to you what a voter in UP told me during the elections in UP. And if the Congress was in power during COVID, the vaccines would have been available to a very few people. Most people would have suffered. And certainly, commissions would have been made by some, some Congress family member. So I don't get into a tutu meme with the Congress. We are presenting to you our record for the last five years. 
we present to you our record for the last nine years in the in the central government. It is for you and the voter of Nagaland to decide whether you want people who show up during elections and make reckless claims, lies, and falsehoods, or do you want to continue this journey of progress, which has come about as a result of very very dedicated hard work by Double Engine Sarka of the BJP NDPP in Nagaland and Prime Minister Narendra Modi in Delhi. Uh, in regard to the 18,000, 90,000 youth that will be skilled every year in Nagaland, what field, field are we looking at and which skill development field? So the way this works is, and, and if you see the budget language, it says the Prime Minister's vision is industry ready and future ready. The post-COVID world today is seeking out Indian talent. Whether it is Europe, whether it is Japan, whether it is USA, they want Indian talent. But they want Indian talent in high-tech areas. They want Indian talent in very well-trained hospitality. They want uh, Indian talent in many, many areas, including healthcare and healthcare technology. So the skills, and the Prime Minister has announced 30 Skill India International Centers, one of them will certainly be in Nagaland, which is <coughs> to skill our youth to even take care of global opportunities skill our youth also for the high-tech opportunities within India. The digital economy, that is the technology space in India, has created jobs of almost 18 lakh new jobs in the last one year. 18 lakh new jobs. We want Naga youth to have the skills to grab those opportunities. We skill them here and then... No, 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 no. I, I, think, I, know, I, I know you think it's a clever question, but I'll give you a clear answer. Yeah. The, Investments follow where talent is and opportunity is. In the event there is no talent, investment certainly will not come in. But if you create a pool of talent, if you create the enabling environment, like I said, Digital India Startup Hubs, which allow a youth to look at self-employment as an opportunity, create more and more capability within that ecosystem, investments will also follow. It is today one of the fastest growing segments in the IT space is in smaller towns and smaller cities. In the Kohima startup center that we set up and we inaugurated just a year ago, we are seeing a lot of demand for people to come and start, set up startup. But the key is talent. You need to be skilled for the future ready jobs and future ready opportunities. Uh, sir, an update on the smart city, Kohima smart city. A lot of projects <coughs> have been taken up by different now entities and organizations. Now why was that? And uh, can you give us look, an update on look, that? Look, there is a general question about why smart cities have slowed down in the last two, two and a half years. And it's a legitimate question. I come from Bangalore mm -hmm. and I am asked the question as an MP representing my city. You please understand one thing. In the last two and a half years, if you were a municipal corporation of Kohima or a municipal corporation of Bangalore or a municipal corporation of Mumbai, your number one priority was to protect people. A lot of money, a lot of resources were spent on gearing up the healthcare system, paying for vaccines, procuring vaccines. In this budget, the Prime Minister has recognized the need for creating modern cities. And he has talked about more reforms in our cities and talked about sustainable cities. So if, to answer your question, especially on uh, uh, cities in hilly regions and northeast, there is a clear mm -hmm. focus within the Urban Development Ministry in India, Government of India, to create a more, uh, much more customized framework for towns like Kohima and for other towns that are hill, sort of uh, the hill, hill, hill towns as they call it. <coughs> so don't please assume that the last two and a half years of lack of progress is in some sense a report card of that scheme or program. I think whether it is Bengaluru, whether it is Mumbai, whether it is many other cities, the last two and a half years the focus and priority has been to protect the lives of people. I think in the BJP, our popularity, our development focus is is a is a is a is a momentum, is a is a discourse and a debate that people cannot fight on merit. So people will either tarnish us on uh, some other grounds of religion, some people will tarnish us on try and block our uh, block our public meetings. This is fine. We have no problem with this. If they may try and uh, not uh, give Prime Minister Modi ji an opportunity to speak, 
but the people of Meghalaya, the people of Nagaland, people of all over the country will certainly are certainly experiencing the impact of Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji's good governance and will continue to experience that. Uh, any party that tries to create these artificial roadblocks may think that they are successful and that is their political strategy, but uh, we, we think good governance and serving our people is our strategy and we will continue to do that. Look, the way we work is our alliances are not opportunistic alliances. Our alliances are built on the basis. Prime Minister Modi ji's view towards alliances is not somebody has 10 percent vote and the 10 plus our 6 will make it 25. That's not how we approach it. We approach it based on a common framework and a common vision that we want to improve the state. We want to change the, transform the lives of the people. And if there is a need for the alliance to be extended to all of these other important third tier of our democracy, we will certainly explore that and do that. But that is a milestone down the road. Uh, we intend to work with our alliance partners where, wherever they are in the country. We want to work on a common mission of transforming India, transforming the state, transforming the city. And like the Honorable Prime Minister has said, we believe that India today is the fifth largest economy in the world. In a few years, it will be third largest. And we are on the cusp of becoming a developed nation in the next decade. And uh, that is our mission and that is what we are focusing on.